I'm speaking with Emmanuel Grimaldi, the chairman of the International Chamber of Shipping. I'm going to dive in with a question. The International Maritime Organization has got a pathway forward for decarbonisation, and now it's all about putting a price on carbon. How would the Chamber like to see that happen? I think that uh, <clears throat> for a long time the, the, the ICS, which is uh, the most important association of ship owners, practically 90% of the ships are part through the National Association, are part of our association. We have been advocating already some time ago uh, that there should be a sort of uh, fund and reward system. And of course funding, uh, it is from the industry, from the consumption and from the emission. So we have been sponsoring this type of uh, situation and I think that this shows very much the responsible and pragmatic approach that our association had. And we are very glad that the IMO has agreed on very much the same path that we, so that in 2050 we should have net zero, more or less the net zero emission. Can you just expand on the proposal that you've made for the front fund and reward program? How will that work? Yeah, that, that would work very well. It's a win-win-win solution because what we are thinking is that we have to bridge the cost of the differential between the new fuels and the old fuels, which probably is about the double the amount. So the cost, if you would say that today gas oil would cost about $500, probably the new fuels would cost around $1,000. So, of course, it, it is so much the differential that it, it is difficult to understand or to compete paying the double the amount of fuel. So what we are saying, probably we should uh, put a, a sort of uh, funding, we should have a funding on all consumption of, of fuel so that we can bridge and pay 40% of the differential rewarding the uh, early players, the pioneers, the one who will start this change. Of course, then, in due time, I think that when these new fuels will be produced at scale, most probably the differential will be much less. And therefore, the problem will be much less. And uh, I'm sure that we can change in due course this type of uh, fund and reward. I think we have to accompany this transition because it is clear that our business has been established that it is one of the hardest to abate uh, businesses. It's the old chicken and egg question, isn't yes. it? But final question is, in the Capital Link seminar earlier, you said that there was a possibility that the traditional ship owner will fade away if finance and funds come in to help fund the transition. And therefore, I guess the fund and reward program is a way of maintaining uh, the existing business model. Um, no, 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 no. I, I think this was the question, but yeah. I, I didn't uh, agree on this. Right. I think that most of the traditional ship owners will stay in business, mm. particularly if they are doing the necessary transition and they are investing. Most of these uh, families, they have invested for ages and for generations into shipping. And you see that some of the big names of shipping are still there after 200 years. So I, I am very much confident that they will make the transition. Of course, the smaller ones, what I was saying is probably they need to have some advice and probably the classification society can do this job and help the smaller company to address these issues. Okay. and. Lastly, you said that you had 20 people working with you on green technology resource. What are they telling you about the, the new gen, what the next generation of ships will be? Will it be carbon, liquefied carbon carriers? What, what does the future look like according to your research? According to our research, I think there would be multiple solutions depending from the type of ships. We are looking, for instance, for very short holes on some uh, ferries that we have to use probably electric. Uh, we are already using electric, for instance, in port, and we have zero emission in port on about already 20 ships. We were the first who started this as pioneer. Of course, then, uh, for uh, the other ships, we are today 
thinking that ammonia, which is the family of hydrogen, should be the reply. But of course, a lot has to be done to make sure that this will be safe and not poisoning for our crew and for the people on board. So there is a long way to go. But the vessels that we are building are ammonia ready, which means that they are, they could, in due course, become uh, use the ammonia and have zero emission. Meanwhile, also another uh, revolution that is taking place is to move ships from one place to the other and uh, the cargo with less energy. And that will help even when we will have different type of fuels. And uh, there we have been particularly successful and we believe that we are saving over 500,000 tons of fuel only and therefore over 1 million cubic meter of emission uh, uh, just by using better technologies and there are actually very good propellers that can be used, very good paint work. There, there is hundreds of systems to improve on, uh, by even retrofit on the old ships to improve your uh, uh, performance. Mr. Grimaldi, thank you very much thank for your time. Thank you very much.